Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Dr. David Lillycrap and his talk, Pursuing a Miracle in Modern Day Medicine. Hello everyone. In my journey as a clinician scientist, I am constantly amazed by the complexity and elegance of human biology. I'm equally aware that solving this puzzle represents the holy grail to forwarding medical care. The story I'm going to tell you this evening begins in April 1999, when two staff reporters at the Wall Street Journal introduced the world to the term personalized medicine. This term, alternatively referred to as precision medicine, has begun to revolutionize the way that we deliver medical care in the last two decades. And in 2016, President Barack Obama introduced the Precision uh, Medicine Initiative in the United States. Actually, I, I had been pursuing precision medicine 20 years prior to this during my postdoctoral studies. Uh, these occurred at, at a time when, coincidentally, um, several of the blood coagulation genes had been cloned, giving me a unique opportunity to introduce this new genetic element to medicine into a research program. At this time, I was naive and scientifically innocent, but always curious, just as I am now. And I remember at that time driving from our research laboratory in Cardiff in Wales to London on one typically dark and damp late November day in 1984 to listen to Dr. Jane Gitcher, who was the lead investigator on the Factor VIII gene cloning study, give a, give a lecture. Uh, for those of us attending a, her lecture, she was a scientific god. The atmosphere in that, in, in that lecture theater the attention and the anticipation was extraordinary. And even now, my recollection of that event is deeply imprinted in my mind. This was an incredibly exciting time for me because I realized that the opportunity to translate this new genetic information into clinically meaningful actions was immense. And so within two years of returning to Queens, we'd established a national reference center for the diagnosis of in inherited bleeding disorders, and we began some discussions about translating this information into new therapeutic uh, modalities. And I'll return to this towards the end of my talk. Upon my return to Queens, I shared my initial experiences with precision medicine with my colleague and mentor, Dr. Alan Giles. Alan had been recruited to Queens in 1980 and soon after my return from my postdoctoral studies, Alan and I um, started a productive um, collaboration focused on the science and the management of inherited bleeding diseases. Alan retired from Queens 24 years ago and passed away in October of this year. I'd like to dedicate this conversation to Alan's vision for excellence in hemophilia research. The story I'm going to tell you this evening uh, will tell you th that a successful pursuit of personalized or precision medicine is achievable, but that this won't occur due to a, an overnight modern-day miracle. To achieve this ambitious and incredibly worthwhile goal will take a sustained and prolonged commitment over several decades. Uh, too often, we're told that a new scientific discovery will be converted into transformed medical care in a short period of time. And indeed, occasionally, this does happen. And you all know that recently, the development of affected COVID vaccines has done exactly this. But that is an exception. So let me try to help you through this uh, conundrum. Let's begin by considering the biological basis of personalized medicine. At a time when our appreciation of the diversity of humans, which has happened to us belatedly as, as a society, we now realize that the human population is comprised of a wonderful mosaic of individuals who look, think, and act as individuals. It, look around you. This basic condition with human beings 
is due to the astonishingly complex interaction of genes and their environment, nature and nurture, a phenomenon you're all familiar with and that we've known about for a long time. So what's different now? We've known for a long time that certain environmental factors are associated with increased risks of disease, but our understanding of inherited components of the human condition in health and in sickness has only recently become available. And we now recognize that our individual variability has significant genetic contributions, which in many instances uh, ranges from somewhere between 30 and 80% of the influences that produce us as individuals. And so understanding these things require a, a good knowledge of the genetic basis of individuals. And this leads us on to the Human Genome Project. This EPIC initiative, initially reported 20 years ago, has provided us with the first chapter of a textbook that will accumulate many more chapters in the coming decades. And indeed, when the original draft sequence was submitted in 2001, it was still missing significant amounts of information. And only this year, 20 years on, do we now have a complete human genome sequence available. The human genome sequence provide us with, provides us with an essential resource to pursue the strategy of personalized medicine. But in addition to this, we also need access to extensively studied populations of individuals with good health and with a range of different diseases. These initiatives require large interactive efforts and also the availability of widely accessible databases for analysis. One of the largest and most advanced of these big data collectives is the UK uh, Biobank. And this biobank has now documented detailed health information on half a million people. And these individuals are undergoing extensive genetic analysis as we speak. The most recent report from the UK Biobank published earlier this year has documented the complete gene sequences in 150,000 individuals. This amounts to 93 tr trillion individual pieces of information. So these results on these 150,000 individuals have shown us that there is an astonishing 600 million small DNA changes to the normal reference DNA sequence and an additional 59 million changes where the DNA changes produce significant structural abnormalities in the DNA. So why is this important? Well, this, these early results from this groundbreaking genomic study illustrate to us the enormity of the challenge that we have in operationalizing personalized medicine. So with this as background, you might ask, why am I interested in precision medicine? Well, I'm a hematologist, a blood specialist, and maybe in part because access to blood samples is pretty easy and we can do easy blood testing, hematologists have tended to be at the forefront of molecular advances in the last several decades. And as you've heard, my training coincided with the cloning of several of the human blood clotting factor genes, two of which are associated with the two most common inherited bleeding disorders in humans, hemophilia that you will have heard of, and a less well-known condition, uh, von Willebrand disease. And soon after these discoveries, we recognized that the patterns of genetic abnormality that cause these diseases was different. In hemophilia, the DNA code changes always occur in a single region of the genome, the factor VIII gene. In contrast, in some types of von Willebrand disease, uh, there are several different genes involved in producing that condition. We now recognize that in fact the inheritance pattern that we see in these unusual forms of von Willebrand disease, which is relatively complex, is a common form of genetic contribution in many physiological and pathological phenomena. As a good example, human height is highly heritable with genes responsible 
for about 80% of how tall you are. But we now understand that this large genetic influence on your height is due to DNA variations in over 700 regions of the genome, an astonishingly complex genetic engagement, which actually is probably relatively frequent. So how do we look after our patients with precision medicine in mind? In our von Willebrand disease patients, we carry out a series of genetic tests, and on the basis of the results of those tests, we advise the families about disease inheritance. And we also use this information to personalize their therapies, a task for which my hematology colleague, Dr. Paula James, has an international reputation. Our hemophilia program of research, which is focused on a disease which is much less complex than von Willebrand disease, has um, strategies which align themselves more with the uh, conduct of precision medicine. Severely affected hemophiliacs who are inadequately treated experience repeated bleeding events into their joints and muscles. And over time, uh, these bleeding events produce a disabling arthritis, which usually is early adulthood. Our approach, our precision medicine approach to this, is that we determine the amount of factor VIII that's present within their blood, and we do genetic tests to identify the DNA code changes that produce the disease. We also use this genetic information to identify asymptomatic female carriers of hemophilia and carry out prenatal testing to identify affected fetuses. As hemophilia is always due to problems with factor VIII, we can treat this disease by replacement, replacing the missing or dysfunctional factor VIII protein with factor VIII concentrate transfusions. And these transfusions have been the regular form of therapy in hemophilia for the past four decades. But they have not been without their complications. In the mid-1980s, uh, some of you may remember that, the, that thousands of hemophiliacs around the world were infected with HIV and hepatitis viruses, which they obtained from contaminated factor VIII transfusions. And many of these patients died from these complications. Even now, although these factor VIII transfusions are extraordinarily safe, they have to be administered by intravenous infusions several times each week. A, a, a significant uh, inconvenience to adult treaters and very challenging in young children who have hemophilia. I'm getting close to the end of this story, but before I finish, I want to tell you how personalized molecular medicine is transforming the therapeutic landscape of hemophilia. Uh, this is a discovery journey now that I've traveled for the last two decades. After the factor VIII gene was cloned in 1984, it soon became apparent that we could use this information to treat hemophilia by the delivery of gene therapy. Here at Queen's, after his recruitment in 1980, Alan Giles arranged for the transfer of several hemophilic dogs from the Mayo Clinic to Queen's for the conduct of a series of experiments in which he was comparing the output of different forms of factor VIII transfusion. Hemophilia occurs naturally in dogs, and the hemophilia dog colony at Queen's, now in its 15th generation, is the result of crossbreeding beagles and miniature schnauzers. These dogs have wonderful personalities, and they are treated like celebrities by their own team of highly, highly qualified veterinary technologists. This is one of only two hemophilia dog colonies in the world, and they have severe factor VIII deficiency. Their bleeding tendency mir mirrors that that you see in humans, and we treat their bleeding with the infusion of dog factor VIII that we make by recombinant DNA technology. So with my interest in molecular genetics, in the late uh, 1990s, we began to set about identifying the dog factor VIII gene 
and identifying the, the, the DNA change in these dogs that was responsible for their disease. Uh, then approximately 15 years ago, we took some of this information that we had derived and started a, a, a gene therapy uh, study in a small cohort of dogs and followed these dogs for 12 years. During this extended follow-up period, and after just a single infusion of the gene therapy product, these dogs uh, sh showed a persistent and protective level of factor VIII in their blood, and they didn't bleed. Their inherited bleeding disorder had been cured. We published these exciting results in the journal Blood this summer, and on August the 24th this year, more than 35 years after the original Factor VIII gene cloning story, and after years of commitment from scientists around the world, the first human haemophilia gene therapy product was licensed for use in Europe. One of the first commercially available haemophilia medicines, gene therapy medicines, for any disease. This has been a long and winding road to clinical success. This was not an overnight miracle of science. And even now, there are many questions about the efficacy and long-term outcomes of this therapy that require further investigation. While the time has come for the clinical application of haemophilia gene therapy, further basic science research will be done to, to ensure that future generations of this treatment are even better. Let me summarize our conversation. With the major advances that we've seen in molecular science over the last three decades, particularly in genetics, the potential now to personalize medical diagnosis and therapy is immense. And as we've illustrated with our hemophilia dog study, that some of these advances are life-changing. Clinical care will continue to require history taking and physical examination, but there will be an increasing input of, of, of molecular science um, that will become an integral component of clinical management. These molecular approaches will provide enhanced diagnostic and prognostic information and will eventually expand our treatment options and enable more personalized choices for therapy. However, human biology and disease are both hugely complicated and any promise to introduce these advances in a short period of time will likely be destined to failure and disappointment. Most importantly, we must continue to encourage the involvement of talented biomedical trainees to become engaged in the translation of this huge amount of molecular knowledge into clinical benefits. It is increasingly my purpose to make sure that the younger successors in my group become engaged in this key element of, of, fut of future of medicine. There is much to look forward to in the future, but time and persistence will be required if we are to meet, meet the full promise of personalized medicine. The practice of personalized medicine is an attainable goal. It'll just take time. Thank you.